Okay, let's see. Let's uh, let's make some a pitcher, a couple of pitchers. Okay. Yeah. I should turn that one on too. Whoa. That one's a little bit uh, different than the pedal. Oh, that doesn't make anybody sick. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. How much clay is this, you think? Three pounds. Six. I think it was about, I think it was maybe six pounds or something. But we'll make a couple of different. This is probably about maybe four pounds. Okay, we'll save that for another one. So I want to, I want to make two, two pictures. One with an added spout and one with a uh, spout formed right on the pot. And they, for me, they kind of come from two different lineages of pitcher ideas. One being um, the Mediterranean, kind of pots from Crete and from Cyprus and southern Italy and with a big belly. Big belly and a long spout. I showed a couple of Minoan pictures last night. And those have always been. I just love those. I love those pots. Um, but I like how when you look at them, the form really suggests that it's uh, it contains and it delivers. It's like the the form tells you exactly what it's supposed to do. I got to go to I got to go to Crete a few years ago and go see some of those pots, the Minoan pots. I you know daydreamed about them forever and man, it was and I got got to walk into this in in Crete and Heraklion, that's the capital city there. They they have a big national you know fantastic museum of all the Minoan artifacts been closed for like five years, and they they have a, like a temporary museum that's a, a room about this big and the room next door. That's the whole museum. So it was a little bit of a letdown, but still, you walk in and like there's the octopus pot, you know, oh, and yeah. there's those pictures. It's like, wow, <laughs> yeah. there they are. Yeah. <laughs> And then, it, then you realize, like, you know, they probably made that exact pot about four billion times. Mm -hmm. But there's about four billion of those out there somewhere. Because <laughs> I remember thinking, I want to see that one. But, you know, whenever you see one like that from history, like, they've made that pot many, 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 many times. Did they throw them? Yeah, they threw them, too. They did throw them. I mean, they, they coil built big pots, big jars a lot, but, but they threw a lot. Yeah, the Minoans did. Those pitchers are all thrown. Yeah. It was fun to go see that. You know, it was fun to see the section of the palace of Kenosis, where they said the potteries were and stuff. There's, there's shards, shards all over. My friend said that they were, you know, they weren't old ones. But I don't, I don't believe them. Like I brought them. Fragments of it. <laughs> Another really good experience too for uh, ceramic. Some really great museums that if you ever get an opportunity to go to the. Um, if you're in Washington D.C., our illustrious capital, and wait to talk to your senator, 
You can make an appointment to go to the Freer Gallery. Freer, um, the Freer and the Sackler are part of the Smithsonian. But if you know you're going to be there and you have some time, it's totally worth it. You call them up, tell them you study ceramics and you want to make an appointment to go to visit the cases there. And they're obligated by their, you know, their, it's in their bylaws to do that. So they have to take anybody who wants to see these things into the cases there. You get to go in and see like one of the premier collections of Asian ceramics in the world. It's spectacular. And you go in, there's these cases that it fills up a building, you know, bigger than this whole building, just with these beautiful cases with all these relics of history that you've seen pictures of in books and stuff, but they're all like, wow, there it is. <laughs> and you know that's the one. And then they say, I'd like to look at that one. And they'll open the case up and they bring it out and they bring it over to a table that's, that's a high table with a pad on it. And then they let you handle the pot. So they care, wow. they, they manage it real carefully. Yeah. But it's, anybody ever go do that? If you ever go get a chance when you're in D.C., it's totally worth it. It's one of those ceramic epiphanies, you know, that you go in and just drool. Oh, I just, like, visited a gal in Jackson, and she was making sure her kiln was, you know, they got damaged or removed, but she had a Greek pot that was, you know, with a piece together, and she had a whole lab, and I all the other pots. It was like, wow. you know, like just like, you know, two, two to four thousand year old pots. I know you're like, oh, we still make it the same way. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know what I love is is architectural ceramics when you get to see the back side of them. And you know, it's like somebody would just fill in that mold up and it's all those finger marks, right? Oh, I know how they did that. At the fair one time they had a they had a Jomon pot from Japan that was, and they thought it was about 5,000 years old or so. And they wouldn't bring that one out let us handle it, but they let us put our hand on it in the case. That was almost just as good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I can feel where that hand was. Yeah. 5,000 years ago. Okay, so this this one I try and be a little more precise with the throwing, just to just to you know redeem a little bit here, not being quite so loosey goosey. But again, with this one, this is going to be the base of the of the jar of the of the pitcher. So I'm just going to make a round form here. What's that? The Idaho Art Lab people are coming over now. Oh. St. Anthony, so. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, they're a rough bunch. <laughs> Cowboy. Rich to us. <laughs> How much time do I have? Yeah. <laughs> So we talked about this just a little bit here, this idea about working in series too. And I think, you know, with, when you work on the wheel, and you, you, you can move fairly quick with things. It's always, you always do work in a series. I think it almost comes naturally, but it's really important to do that too. Don't make just one of them. Make, make as many as you can kind of wrap your brain around or your time, your time frame around. Sometimes you only have time to make a few things, right? But if you make just one, then that's only one idea about a form, right? And form is so elusive. You have to make more than one to try to get your brain wrapped around it. So 
if you work in a series, then you then you can compare them, and it kind of helps you understand a little bit broader. Because it's hard to, if you have just one, it's like you can't say like, you know, this is right or wrong or something. You can almost you can't really even do that with a series hardly, but you can you can start to look at it critically and sort of pitch this idea against this idea against this idea. And, you know, you look at a series of forms that you make, and there's going to be a couple that stand out as being stronger, right? So that idea of a series, I think, is always, always critical. So pictures, I try to I try to make them a little bit lighter weight because you're gonna fill them up with liquid. Go to pour them. Somebody gets hurt. They're not. If they're too heavy, they're gonna hurt you. Well, that's nice. <laughs> really vivid experience with that one time at the Archie Bray Foundation. There's a little uh, gallery in the front of the pottery, quaint. It's so quaint. <laughs> and it, it was this in the old days before the old building, the new building. And I was there all by myself. It was a day like this. Spectacular. Sitting in there, it's cold in the pottery. God, I wish somebody would come out. Here comes a car. It's like, oh my God, a live one, you know. It's in the middle of the window and nobody would come out there. And here comes somebody, this little car, and it was like that image of, uh, remember Cruella, Cruella de Vil? <laughs> All the way down the driveway. Come on, come on. Finally, this car stops, and this elderly woman gets out and she's got a nice cheery smile, you know, she walks in and I was the only one in there. I was, I was the only one around for, it was quiet, but she walks in and she kind of looks around the room and then she sees a picture across the way, you know, this little picture that I happen to have made. So I was like, oh, cool. It's like fishing, you know, you got to get one. <laughs> she walks over there and she reached down and she had this like just as bubbly as it is outside just bright happy she picks that thing up and she was like <laughs> <laughs> and I could see it it made such an impression on me about the weight of a pot you know? it's like, she's like god why do you make it so heavy so heavy and I'm like uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. I didn't tell her it was mine <laughs> at all. But, you know, I tried to make up some excuse about it. But she just said, you know, I, was, I wanted a gift for a friend of mine. And we were just, you know, another elderly person. And it, she couldn't have, it was too heavy. Too heavy. But it said, it, and we all know it, you know, you know about, and it has to do with the, the how the, the form is engineered. Right? And how that handle is on the back of it, the balance. It's one of the things about pictures that's so compelling when you get into making them. It's the engineering of them is really challenging. To make a good picture is really challenging. It just is. And so, you know, I always I always try to try to like control the weight on them a little bit more. I always and I always said that I always say that I think you know, picture is the one the one form where that thinness really pays off, I think. But then 
if you know somebody will come along and make a really heavy picture that works well to contradict that. Like my friend Doug Heron. Have you ever heard of a potter named Doug Heron? He used to make. You know him? I heard of him. He was a. He, he had made these like sort of early American style pictures with these handles that were. You know they were just like. And they, they were sturdy pods, but they it all fit. It all made sense with the dynamics of the weight of the handle. And so, you know, it's, I think there's a lot more, it's like you think you solve the answer, and then you realize there's so many more complexities to it. Like, you know, if, if the weight's one part of it, the engineering, the mass of the handle, how full you can fill it up, how drunk you are, I mean, it's all these factors. <laughs> learn something new at workshops. Usually I'm trying to do something and somebody will say, why don't you just do it like this? Yeah, right. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to learn. Okay, let's, let's talk about this picture here for a second. It's at a nice stage for, it's a little flexible, but we can, we can dart this. Make some adjustments here, I should have done this first. I can see my tools disappearing <laughs> into, the, of the, uh, into the pot of sludge here. The motor doesn't help much anymore. surface you get a little bit or like kind of like the surface you get a little bit like yours <laughs> not like yours <laughs> no. but, but this is really mine right it's it's like you know how you have a signature everybody's signature looks the same but they're all yours it's unique and so if you spend a lot of time investing in learning how to throw and developing that sense of touch mm -hmm. on this on a thrown surface, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's like that's it becomes really precious, right? It's important to you. Mm -hmm. 
But then you get bored with it being round all the time. So you're always trying to figure out strategies how to take it out of the round. And this is a good strategy for that. Darting is a good strategy for it because you can still, like, look, it's still got all that signature stuff on it. But now it's not round anymore. Hey, good. <laughs> do something else with it. So then, here's, here's, we cut it once and then we fold it over itself and then cut it again. And then you get two parts that come off of it, but one cut makes a line that meets up. Can you up. show that to this direction? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you fitted it back together. Yeah, so then it goes back together because it's one cut that's made it. Right? Now, you, there's a lot of different ways this can happen, too. Tara Wilson does a lot of darting, too. And she just, she cuts, she just cuts a big leaf right out of the back of the form and then folds it back together. Lauren it, yeah. And then, you know, at this point, too, like with a, with a darted thing, what you could do is you could leave, you could leave that. That could, that could become part of your pot. Mm -hmm. Ooh, those seams, the seams can be really nice too. Sometimes, sometimes you leave them, and sometimes I'll just get rid of it too. I'll just work this together. And it's the same idea as the 45 there. It's two 45s going back together. So did you cut that on an angle then? Yeah. So is the angle to increase the surface area? Yeah. Yeah. Of the joint. Yeah, and it also, yeah, then it, it just goes back together better, you know. But I think it's, a, you know, you would say that too, it's the surface area. And if the clay's a little moist like this, then I don't really, I'm not worried about where scoring it and stuff. It's a little drier. I'm a pretty big fan of slip and scoring. I slip and score everything. Yeah. And I, I tell students that they have to do that too. You remember that, Al? Big time. I'm really good at slip and scoring. So, you know, we're, we're, we're in there like scoring away at everything and we had a visiting artist named Walter Keeler. Who's a, he's a potter from England, uh, Wales. Who's that? Walter Keeler. Genius. Guy's so cool. But he's up there doing all these demos. He's making these, okay, I'm going to put these handles on. Little tiny bit of slip, sticks it right on there. And I'm sitting back there watching him going, he didn't score that. <laughs> <laughs> Walter. You know, I didn't say anything. Let's do it again. Walter, what are you doing? Don't show these guys. They, you know, you, you got to score. Score and slip. He's like, oh, no, I never do that. <laughs> so get a slip, put it on there. <laughs> so that night I was making cups at home. I looked around, made sure nobody's looking. <laughs> a slip on there, stuck it on there, worked fine. But your clay was wet. The clay's wet. Yeah. It's the temperature of the clay, how the, how the clay, um, how wet the clay is when it goes together. It's logical and stuff, but you know it, that, that thing about scoring. It's like you you have all you always have, everybody has this experience where it comes out of the kilns and, and that handle's just like popped right off of there completely, and then you see underneath <laughs> yeah. it you see like four distinct little straight lines, and, <laughs> and, and then you hear that. I did score. I did score. <laughs> Do you always just make one spout, or do you make a couple spouts for a teapot? This time? I I usually make um, about eight of them for eight teapots or, or six teapots. I usually make more than one at a time. So I'll make a, you know, I'll throw a bunch of spouts and definitely throw a few extras. But I don't make like double or anything, you know. I used to, 
back in the old days, but I don't do that as much anymore. So this is going to be a spout for that other picture. Just a way to create a pattern or texture on here. And doesn't, I mean, sometimes sometimes this happens and uh, doesn't need to, for sure. But, you know, if you think about, sort of thinking about the, the disc as a slab, as a way of making a slab and texture. It's a German design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is going to be a spout. Yeah. A spout. Let's stretch this out just a little bit. Mm. And then we can you know, fold this up underneath it just a little bit. This always looks really dorky. <laughs> Now this becomes a, just a lip of the pot that I can form a spout here. And it kind of needs to happen like when it's really wet like this because you need the clay to be flexible. You can't really set up and then be all soupy and goopy like that, you know. I know I, I always 
feel guilty when, like, it's the first sunny day in a long time, and you guys are all in here doing this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But at least you got a nice view back here. <laughs> it was cloudy. Everyone wants to stay at home. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing it wasn't a powder day. What a <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> For powder day, the night we could have just put it off till tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> This, the, this as a sort of a continuous line, that mm -hmm. long pour, you know, that comes up mm -hmm. on the, and there was, uh, there's some pots that they made in Cyprus that are, I mean, it's, it's sort of that same region. You think about the Mediterranean and all the trading and everybody's jumping back and forth and looking at, hey, look at these cool pots. Oh, man, watch this. You know, you can just imagine all this sort of stuff going on between these cultures mm. in the old days, you know. And <laughs> but the uh, pots from Cyprus, the the belly, it's like you, the whole picture was like one big the spout's like one big belly, you know. And mm. that and they're obviously looking at birds mm -hmm. quite a bit too. They're really bird like. But that that mm -hmm. long spout with the spout like you know Way, way, way back. John, John Gill told, showed me that too one day. He said, here, come here. And he'd go, we'd go to the library and look at these books. And he showed me some really great cy Cypriotic pictures that were real dramatic. And that, that was in, really influential. Yeah. And then we're going to cut this out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's mark this. <laughs> Carefully peel this off of here. Make it flop around a little bit. Now I can take this extra weight out of here. <laughs> So that I don't get a dirty look from somebody trying to buy a heavy pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. <laughs> and when we cut this out, we want to leave a quarter inch seam allowance for all you seamstress people. <laughs> This is a little drier, so we'll score this a little bit. Walter. Darn it. He gave a really good workshop for our students. It was really good. He had a really nice way of talking about pots and like just the time, the time that you need to just practice. He just talked. He's, he used the term mileage. Get just got to get a lot of mileage in on the wheel. Mm -hmm. he said pretty soon it's because you have to kind of rethink. You're rethinking how you understand something. You know. You see me? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. With your hands, so you just need time. Okay. I'm going to go spin that tape for you. That oh, okay? yeah, that'd be good. You know, Malcolm Gladwell spoke about the need for 10,000 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you think how fast 10,000 hours go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I always think with spouts too that you want to have, um, you know, think about the path of the liquid of whatever you're pouring. You know, you want it to not have to go over any major waterfalls or <laughs> anything like that to get out, right? So try and make that a pretty clear path as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a kind of an, a critical spot here for this idea because it's um, when you add spouts onto things, you got to make sure that you're kind of engineering the pouring of it mm -hmm. because if you don't, it, you make a mess. And, and like with this one, I I made a whole bunch of these one time, got them out of the kiln all excited, and went to pour. And they poured here first, and then over here, and then a long time later, finally out the top up there. So this 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 won't work like this yet. But so I've got one more little thing here. Just follow this line of the spout and open this up back here. Just cut this open here, and then what it you know it does a couple of things. It kind of changes that pour line there, but then it also you know I can only fill it up to here now too, right? right. But then it won't all slosh out when you're trying to pour something like beer or something like that. <laughs> Iced tea. Mm -hmm. Stretch that belly out there a little bit. So is this style all year round? I <laughs> mean, <laughs> 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 the style of uh, is that a trick. Is that a trick question. Round, yeah. Just just the round slab that you fold and stick on. No. Someone in Germany on Bierstein, <laughs> about 1500. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think the Neanderthals came up with this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, no, there's, and even, you know, there's a lot of, um, I mean, I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've made this picture oh, a lot, right? And, and it's, uh, you know, I think it's I've have it I've had it out there for a long time, but it's also it is that thing that Clary Ellen used to always say this too. Said like she'd be working away and then she'd like come up with this thing and she'd go, I know this is an original idea, <laughs> <laughs> and then she'd be looking at Chinese pottery. <laughs> oh. There it is. <laughs> it is that thing like people been doing this for so long that somebody came up with did yeah. this for sure. Right. No, it's perfect. Does so does that have a name? That style? No. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. What do you call it? I don't. I don't. I don't have a name for it except for. Um, I don't know. I use. I use this. I use the word um, expression. Expression. You know, the the pot is expression quite a bit, or something like that. And I don't. 
I don't even really like that very much. But I don't know quite else. You know, I like to think that it's. I like to think that they are. They can really be. Pot, they're pods. You know, they can live as pods. But then they have some other kind of uh, suggestion of animation, to it, which I think is that's what I mean by expressionistic. And now we're going to add, so here's that cut edge. I'm going to add something on to that cut edge because I don't like that edge very much. Make it really swoop. <laughs> Has, have, any, have you guys ever been to um, Gatlinburg, Tennessee? <laughs> you know that main street of Gatlinburg mm -hmm. where they have all the, you can mm -hmm. walk up and down and go to all the curio <laughs> shops and stuff yeah. like that? Kind of a horrific thing. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> Tours, <laughs> nightmare. But um, mm -hmm. do you remember the taffy shop? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right next to Dollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are working yeah. everywhere, huh? They are. <laughs> you know who worked at Dollywood? You. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never had that privilege. No. Dolly? Dolly? Yeah. She never worked there. Really? Yeah. Tara Wilson was a was a uh, production potter at Dollywood. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's where she learned all of her tricks. <laughs> it's funny to me to have production potters at Dollywood. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like Carl in the park. Kind of like Carl in the park, yeah. Oh, all right. seal it up. It's a way to put an edge on there that hopefully fits with the rest of the pot a little bit more. <coughs> This, this, you know, most of this stuff, with a lot of these things that have, um, it's interesting how you, you try to trace, you know, you, you kind of, you try to trace where things came from, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this idea, I'm like, <coughs> like mm -hmm. how did that, how did I get going on that? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> how do I get out of that? <laughs> but... I think you always have to have, um, you got to try and make time to play when you're working like this, you know, because if you think about it, that's, that's our job, right? Yeah. 
I mean, we're, that's we're supposed to we're supposed to be um, trying different ways to come up with new ideas about about making something. You know, it's, do we really need a new kind of picture? <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. We sure do. <laughs> you haven't seen this one yet, have you? <laughs> but you know, I, I think that I think that word play is a good. It's always it always kind of throws you a little bit. You know, it's like, oh yeah. I mean, it's it's a double edged thing for when you're involved in the arts because you know people will say. Oh, that must be so fun! <laughs> you know, you just want to, you just look at them like, yeah. <laughs> like when people used to come to the Bray and they'd walk around and say, "Oh, it's so peaceful here," and I'd look at them like, oh, that's, "That's nice." I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> that's the illusion that you want to create, right? Yeah. You want it to be like. Ah, everything's all perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same thing with, with I mean, people have an impression about that, about mm -hmm. when you're, and, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it is, I think it's a great, make it, working with your hands and making and creating, it's ultimately a great thing, but it's a lot of work, right? Okay. A lot of work and it's always, um, you're never done, you know, you're never mm -hmm. finished. So, you know, you've always, it can always be more. It's like this thing. I want to make, I want to keep making them. You know, there'll, there'll, there'll always be more of them that you can keep making. And then, like, you make something and something happens. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, you get that thing out of the kiln, you know, where you unload the kiln and you're like, and then about 10 minutes later, you're like, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you, it's like you hit these plateaus and then, but immediately you're like, mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> and you kind of keep working and it just goes up and down, up and down, mm -hmm. like that. I remember one of my old friends used to say, I just want to have a normal life. And I kind of go, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's a normal one? It's averages is all. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let this dry too now for a little while. Maybe maybe I should take this one outside too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I may have a fork, but just set that outside for me. Okay. Thanks. Okay, now that that's kind of set that on there a little bit more, fudge this together.
I need some kind of a handle on there. <laughs> it's a little wet though, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait just a little bit. But we got something else to do for mm -hmm. our entertainment pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm the kiln, you mean? Well, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Oops. Mm-hmm. He did. He had a place in uh, in in Helena, and then they moved to. Seattle. So you don't have a place there at all? No, no, but he, he's on the board at the break, comes back oh, okay. quite a bit for that. And they have, you know, they have a lot of friends in Helena, too, so they spend a fair bit of time there. Yeah, they're, he's a great guy. So versatile. You see, he just can do so many things amazingly well. That's what I'm worried about. People start making, we get a demo and making big pots like that. Yeah. Next thing I know, everybody in the studio is like, <laughs> trying to make ginormous pots. Yeah. <laughs> mix their own clay so that yeah. they don't have enough time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After work. Tom's workshop, like everybody was, yeah. I was like, can somebody make some smaller pots to fit in the kiln and all this big stuff? <laughs> yeah, everybody was super inspired. It was cool. You made it look so easy, Tom. Josh. It is easy. <laughs> it is easy. Uh, <laughs> be born with a paddle in your hand. That's why he makes, makes their own clay. <laughs> <laughs> We actually have a gal in the studio now who makes hundreds upon thousands of little itsy bitsy minuscule things. So. Oh. Does she help load the kiln? Uh, yeah, she, she's loading her own kilns these days, somewhat. It's tedious, but I like to be efficient with the space. You bet. Sure. You know, Frances used to. I mean, she she would plan her stuff out like that. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. I mean, I don't plan it real intensively, but I try to do a variety. Where was she teaching at, Josh? At MSU. MSC. Oh, she was there? Yeah. Okay. She was a... When in the old days, right? Yeah, in the 40s. 40s to the 70s. They hired... He, she was there when they hired my dad. So there's only one school in Bozeman? Yes. Okay. Sounds like it changed names. Well, it went from yeah. MS, yeah, Montana State College to Montana State University. Yeah, it did change the names. That is correct. Is, is that it? because of the football team? The Bobcats? Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly sure what it was, why they got to that, um, why it changed to a university. Because it used to be... Um, <laughs> See how does this work? Missoula used to be Montana. Used to be Montana State, I think. And then when it changed, Bozeman became Montana State, and it became University of Montana. Isn't it the curriculum so that changed? Is it? Yeah, like in like Long Beach State. Are you, are you double became, folding over the loops mm -hmm. just to like get more texture? Yeah. Or no, Long Beach State. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, yeah. I think it's the curriculum that is, didn't it used to be architecture and math and science? Uh huh. And now they have humanities. Oh, is that right? Is that what the what it was? I think so. You may be right about that. I'm not exactly sure. Because Missoula was always the university. Of. Daddy was on the board. That's how I know that. Uh huh. And um, that was humanities. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, that, that's probably right. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I think the folding over seems like an important part of the process. Oh yeah, I think yeah, it's a pretty sure. important part of it, yeah, for yeah. sure. This is... Uh, Something, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, right? Oh, we got to trim this one, too. Golly. Look at the details. That's kind of a, no honk, kind of a honk, and, honk and handle on this one. Could take a little bit more finesse on this one. But it's very pretty. It's like like curve, though. Yeah. You mean like it's too massive? Like it's a little bit husky. <laughs> you can blame that on the altitude too. Yeah. That's the way. But it was supposed to shrink. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. 